realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Shout out D on the track. Paint Music Media. Shout out DJ Lee Productions. And I'm Al Ken. But if you a game changer, got my yeah, head yeah. Get our first guest on. Let's go into prayer. 
because we got three guests that's going to blow your mind. They're going to give you some great information. They're going to talk about how God has changed their lives, has moved to the right direction. So let's start first. Let's go into prayer. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for how you're just changing our life. We thank you, Father, how you're just opening doors for us. We thank you, Father, right now, people that are listening right now and on the replay and across the globe, that their lives are being changed. Holy Spirit, I decrease you're going to increase. And Holy Spirit, right now, that everyone that hears right now, that you give us exactly what you say, speak to our guests, what they need to say. And we just praise you and thank you. And in all the great presence, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, without further ado, she our first guest. Uh, she's doing some great things. She's a doctor, Doctor Latasha. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm well. Really glad to have you. Yes, ma'am. Glad, glad to have you here on the show. So you got the floor. Tell us about yourself, doctor, and about your life and how God is moving in your life. Well, um, I I tell you, Logan, um. Uh, as Calvin, you know, I'm so used to Logan, uh, the name of your show, but God has really, um, man, he's really done some awesome things. I'm, I think I'm still coming down from the last two year high of just wow. running and pushing and, um, man, in 10 years, God just took me from being a high school, uh, from long ago, just had a high school, um, GED when I dropped out in 10th grade. So in 10 years, I went from a GED to a, uh, PhD student. Uh, when my money ran out halfway through the program, my institu- uh, uh, seminary reached out to me and said, hey, we see a lot of things you're doing in the community. You ran for office, you wrote books, and I was awarded an honorary doctorate in the same degree I was getting my PhD in leadership studies. Um, mm-hmm. I went from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta to a political candidate in last year's election and became an author of 12 books. So I'm, I'm still coming down off of just that 10-year run of, <laughs> of just pushing <laughs> Wow. Well, hey, people that are listening right now, Dr. Latasha Holden has a, has a testimony. She just told you how God um, took her from being the back of the line to the front of the line, dropping out of school, coming back, get your honorary doctor, but then off stop it, actually getting your doctor's degree. Man, you're a walking testament to being homeless. So tell us about that experience. Like if sometimes people feel like homelessness is like, oh, it's nothing. Can you tell me what you actually experienced by being homeless? Oh my goodness! Beyond with you, um, the last ten years, the last ten years were the hardest time of my life. Um, I wasn't raised in church, so me and God got to know in tr- each other in the trenches, and that probably made it even worse because I had to learn how to trust Him in the, in my darkest hour. Man, I mean, to when I rode in college, we were living in a board of house squatters, so I'm already at the bottom of the bottom. My my self esteem is shot. Uh, I'm, in my mind, I was dumb, stupid. I'm 35 years old at this time. So the last I, the last time I've been in any one school, I was 15 years old. So here I am, 35, been on a board of house with my kids. So it, and, and the process of being homeless was two years. We're talking about shelter, car, family, uh, scraping our money for a hotel for a different night. Um, a lady moved out of her apartment. We moved. We asked him. We stayed up one night. And when people move out, they leave it junky. So it's mess everywhere. And it was probably the hardest time in my life just to change my mind. Thirty-five years old, my mindset was impoverished. It was it was sunken. And so for him to change my mindset, I tell you, I, I see now that I had to experience what I did because I need that um, purging process to be who I am today and who I'm becoming. Wow, wow. Author of 12 books. Now, can you tell you how long were you homeless for? How long? Two years. Two years? And it, two years. It got so bad that I remember walking to a hospital one day, and I told a lady at the front desk, I, I don't want to live anymore. She said, ma'am, are you telling me you want to kill yourself? I said, yes. And they kept me for a week for observation, and they had this padded room in there, I guess for those who are really dangerous to themselves, and I voluntarily asked the lady at the desk every day for that seven days I was there, can I go in there and pray? She's like, well, you don't have to go. I said, I know it. I just need to go in there and pray. And I just remember dropping down to my knees every day, crying out to this guy. I did not know, please help me. I don't have anything. I'm feeling worthless. I don't have no, you know, support. I don't have money. I'm uneducated. I'm underemployed. And by the time I left out of that hospital, I just felt the wind beneath my wings to keep going. And before I knew it, man, I had an AA, a BA, an MBA degree, 
accepted into the PhD program, and um, halfway through that year, my money ran out. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, it, it was, it was really hard on me mentally and my children. Uh, <clears throat> so, when your children look back in that period of time, uh, when they think about where mom is now, what do they say? Well, you know what? It's, it's weird because I think I'm more proud of where they are. That, that's the thing, you know, when, right before we went into the deepness of homelessness, I, I, I had already contemplated suicide. And so I went to my sister and I said, look, this 10 years ago, I, I said, I don't have a lot to give you all. I'm embarrassed. I said, but I was thinking about my legacy. I said, I want to teach you all how to serve. And they were like, Mom, what are you talking about? We don't have anything. I said, I know it. But if I can teach you all how to give back now at your lowest, then I give you a strong foundation to build on the some great leader. And so mm-hmm. out of me, just around a Hurricane Katrina time, and, and out of me showing them how to give back, we did about four or five events in the community. They turned around. My son, um, he's 29. He just retired after 10 and a half years in the Marine Corps of serving. That was his <laughs> way of giving back. Man, he's a biology student now. He just enrolled to get a biology degree. He want to be a, a biology teacher. That's, he said, Mom, that's my way to continue to make a difference. I have a daughter mm-hmm. that's an EMT. She's in college. I have another daughter that's going to graduate next year with her bachelor's in human services, who I just had the pleasure of seeing her off to the Army boot camp. She said, Mom, this is my way of giving back serving. 17-year-old wow. daughter, two-time published author, spoke word. So everybody is kind of like, so I'm more proud of them that if, you know, I felt I gave the essence of who I was, although I didn't have the finances to provide materially. Wow. Well, you have a standing ovation. Your children have perse- uh, persevered. Um, it's always funny uh, to hear uh, what people say they've been in the Marine Corps. Your son was in there for how long? Ten and a half years. Got it. All right. Well, tell them simple five. From a person who was in the Marine Corps for eight. Okay. In the Air Force for five. So I did 13 years in the military. So tell them, hey, shout out to them. I appreciate the hard work and the one who's going into the military, shout out. And, man, you, a mother of four. Wow. Of six. Six, excuse me. So what are the other two doing? You mentioned four. That's one, yeah, the 17-year-old, she's a two-time published author, she's a mm. youth advocate, um, youth leader. She, she was one of the speakers at her school during the National Youth Walkout. Um, my wow. 16-year-old son, Omega, he's a youth athlete, football player, youth leader at Darrell High School. So everyone is leading in their own way, in their own unique way. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Wow, six children. Wow, you mean you make a you make pursuit of happiness look like a bedtime story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people said it was like, oh my goodness, yeah, they, yeah, it, it's funny, but <sighs> I tell you, all about the grace of God. There was no way I could do this by myself. I'm, my mind was. was <laughs> Was blown, man. It, it was if God did not step in and and show me that mercy and grace and just held my hand. It was so many nights I cried during the midnight hour. I remember my son. You know you did the Marine. I said, son, how did you make it to the Marine boot camp? You didn't work out before you went to boot camp like the recruiter told you. And and after I got you know after you graduated, I got the the DVD. I said, Marine have the heart, but how did you make it through? And he said, Well, Mama, I thought about you. He said, I heard you cry many nights. I knew. You know, people were laughing at you. No one would help you. And he said, you could have did anything. You could have gave us up. You could have started drinking drugs. He said, but you didn't do none of that. And so I said, if she can keep going, I can keep going. And he said, that's how you mm. made it through the boot camp. Go ahead. Go ahead. Testimony. <laughs> testimony time. Hey, it's a blessing, um, you know, for those who don't know, with the Marine Corps, 90 days, um, you know, boot camp. It's a lot of trials and tribulations just to graduate. So, very rare for you to say you have six children and you still have all six um, that can say they've never been in foster care, uh, never no. been taken away from you, and you guys were in and out of places for two years. And then from that time to climb up to the mountaintop, your life totally changed. You are a walking free person. You walk the test of what I know. People have been in the fire don't, and don't look like they've been burnt. Uh, well, yeah. And it's absolutely remarkable. Um, you have written, maybe you just clear, 12 books. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> now, out of the 12 that you have written, 
what is the one that that is your favorite or one that you can say, okay, this is the one that I approve over the over the other eleven? Mm. Well, all of them are different genres. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like it's the same series or something. So, I definitely like My Life Story. That was the first one mm-hmm. I wrote, you know. But I did a draw out of children's book. Out of the 12, I wrote four children's books. So, I would, that would be my main genre that I would head to in the future as a children's book author. I just get the joy yeah. out of, yeah, yeah. So, the children's books bring me a lot of joy when I'm doing it and, and doing the colorful pictures and the positive messages. I get a lot of joy out of children's books. <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. Now, in regards to you love children's books more more uh, than the reality side, uh, when people read your, your actual story of what you've been through, what are some testimonies that you got? What kind of feedback have you gotten from your testimony when you tell people what you've been through in that time period? Oh my goodness! It, it's it's funny because it's not just a, a my story is not just for women. I have men reach out to me. Um, recently, I just had a a, a guy reach out via email and said, "Dr. Holden, because of you, uh, I'm back in school. I just want to let you know this mess I made all A's. I'm like, wow, that's what's up. I'm like that to see people say I have I have girlfriends might call. One time, a friend called and she was joking and I didn't know it. She was like. Hey, I just want to tell you I'm mad at you. And I'm like, what do I do? She's like, girl, I got this one child. I'm thinking about dropping out of school. And I think about you. You give nobody no excuse. So I got to hit the books again. So we kind of chuckle on that. But I think people around the world are feeling hope. You know, it's almost like I was on my ordained pastor. People are tired of being preached at. They want to see a sermon. Show me that this actually works if I keep going. That God. And, um, and I think that's why I did so well at the polls. Although I didn't win last year's election, but I think that's why, although being the underdog, I made a huge impact as there as well. I got it. I got it. You know, if that's what you, at political offices where God has called you to, then, hey, uh, keep keep putting that and keep putting it to the fire. Because, you know, we need people that have, first off, they are real, that you can actually touch and one. Yeah. They have testimonies that they can relate, because a lot of times some politicians don't are not able, not very relatable. Uh, they don't feel real. They feel, you know, yeah, yeah, kind of artificial type of individual. They try to pretend to be something real, but really it's artificial. It's make believe. It's something yes. that we already know. It's nothing genuine um, mm-hmm. about them or anything they they do. Um, so. Uh, it's like a hollow type of tree. There's nothing real inside of it. Exactly. Uh, so, with with all that being said, you have can't come out of homelessness. You've got your associates, your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD. Uh, when you think well, about, let me clarify that. Let me clarify that with the PhD because sure. I don't want nobody to see. I went into I, I went into the PhD. I do have PhD credit. Um, I was in a PhD program for about a year, but before I went to the PhD program, after I got my MBA, I did a year in the Master of Divinity program, and so got that it. made up most of my money. Yeah. So because I didn't finish the finish um, the PhD program, uh, G. Moore Theological Institute of America, they had been following me for about a year, and they was like, look. You've been a PhD in leadership. We want to award you a doctor in leadership because we feel you not only had, you know what I'm saying, um, book knowledge, you've actually led a family out of, you know, not only you successful, your kids, you wrote books, you ran for office. And so I was awarded a doctorate degree. And so I just want to clear that I don't want to write it, you know. She don't have a PhD, so I just want to clear it up for any viewers. Listeners. No problem. No problem. <laughs> we got hey, we, well, we got well we got the associates, the bachelor, the MBA. Uh the big yeah. PhD is almost finished, so we're gonna work on that as well. That's honorary right. doctorate. Honorary doctor, we still call you Doctor Holder, regardless of anybody, you know, comes and getting it. You still have the doctors in the house and you know Oh yeah, the, I work uh, on man. They use they use my life. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean for leadership, because, you know, we all can go through and get the textbook knowledge. But like you said, people with those degrees, 
they haven't really experienced and led someone out of anything. It's just because they actually did a – so they gave me the – um yeah, so – I consider myself a doctor. I think I just did as, not as much work than the uh, people who actually did their dissertation. So I'm excited about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we know you're gonna do everything you your heart's desire, and we know we have a lot, you have a lot more in store. So, what does God say you need to do now, 2018, and moving forward? What what, what we're doing with your life? You, you you're moving so many ways conquering so many mountains, what's the next mountain in your life that you got to get removed and cast into the sea? Well, you know what? My my fear, and I, a friend brought out the other day, introvert, but I, was, I, I wasn't an introvert all my life. I think life, um, through going through so much where I had to be quiet, just rejection on top of just I end up becoming an introvert. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to start coming out my shell. I, I launched a business on September the 1st called Three Elements, Inc. And Three Elements, Inc., is I'm continuing the journey from my political race of me going back, inspiring, and helping people. So Three Elements, Inc., um, I do workshops, trainings, personal development coaching, motivational speaking. And one of my books I wrote is a training manual. And I'm going back, and I'm going back to help my sisters and brothers and be that voice and do these workshops to show them how they can transform their mind and also show them the seven steps I put into place to go from that defeated woman at 35 years old to who I am and who I'm becoming. So everything I'm doing from this point is, and I'm putting on my book. You got to think about it. I came out of school in 2017. I ran for office all of last year. So I never had time to really promote my book. I wrote my books in the last year and a half. So now I'm really going out now promoting my books um, and, and, and just go out and, and just be this beacon of light to people who are in darkness. Got it. Amen. And, you know, Always a good question. How old are you now? How old am I now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, 46. So my journey started yeah. when I was, yep, 46. And the journey pretty much started 2006, 2007. Yes, yes. Got it. Okay. Oh, wow. And I don't see it too far. And God has really been too good to really get to you. So pretty much you're looking at 2009, pretty much nine years ago, got, got off and being home. Wow. Yeah. You have, a, you have something to really to tell us and, and, and move through. So you're going to focus on, you said, mostly on your books. Um, my yeah, books, sure my new talk. business. New business, yes, ma'am. Uh, now, you mentioned political office. What are you going to think about running for again? You know, a lot of, because now a lot of people didn't know me, but now they're, you know, I think um, I'm more visible now. A lot of people saying, hey, if you run again, we got you. But it, it's a lot of work. Um, that year, last year, I was the underdog in the race. But I did very well at the polls. I don't even think the other um, candidates would think I would do that well. But we'll have to see. I mean, city council for this, I mean, city council's what, four years? Who knows where I'd be at in two or three years. My my goal right now is to get this business up and running. I'm traveling the world, motivational speaking, doing workshops, trying to help other people um, who are stuck in a rut, you know, who who feel hopeless. So that's my goal right now. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. And how can people get in contact with you, Dr. Holman? You can go to my website, number 3 elements com Again, that's www.3elementsinc.com. You can even email me, 3elements, that's 3 spelled all the way out, 3elementsinc at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. And so I'm looking forward to if you need a speaker, a, a workshop. I'm in Atlanta, so I think you're, what, what city are you in, Calvin? I'm in uh, North Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, so if you got any listeners, or even from South Carolina, you know, if you're looking for a speaker for your Women's Day next year, and we got a lot of, you know, good times where, you know, um, people, you know, for next year coming up, go ahead and reach out to them. I would love to come and inspire um, those, um, you know, who you're catering to. Absolutely. Well, you know, you know, I'll be definitely contacting you real soon so you can come out, out here. So we can get you live on the television, on the camera, on the big screen. Because I believe that people like yourself will need to be 
uh, talked about in the forefront that are making some big strides and people need to hear it. Um, you know, not just not just over in the radio portion, but definitely um, face to face. And that's what yes. I believe is needed for people like you to talk about how good God has been. God is good. And, and just right past Cal, um, a documentary came out on my family and myself about a year and a half ago. That's also available on Amazon. All of my books are on Amazon. Um, the documentary mm-hmm. is No Longer Lost, the Latarsha Holden story. So just, Got you know, it. if someone no has longer. an organization, yeah. No Longer okay. Lost, the Latarsha Holden story. Beautiful documentary. About 30 minutes if someone wants to show that women's event homeless program. They did really well in that document. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, I I know this. <laughs> we already know, Dr. Holden, that God has called you to evangelize. So are you doing anything in regards, but not just your speaking, your speaking engagement done with your business? Are you doing anything inside the church right now? Well, you know what? I'm out there. I have a speaking engagement come up next week about the community versus the church, and I'm one of the ministers that would be on the panel. So um, I, w- I was co-pastoring with my ex-husband, so now I, I'm an ordained pastor, so I operate as an evangelist because I don't have a, uh, you know, my own church at this moment. So I have people call me, hey, Pastor Holden, we need you, can you come and, you know, be guest speaker for Women's Day, you know, or this Sunday. So I'm definitely open to come and share the word of God and inspire the people in the congregation. So, yeah, um so at this moment, I'm operating in the uh, role of an evangelist, and I'm just I visit many churches. I'm just trying to see what God wants me to do in this hour. You know, if I'm going to join, join where He's going to send me to, or if I'm going to start my own thing. Where he, so I'm just praying about that. Okay. Well, we in prayer. We all know you're going to evangelize. We know you already said that to go after people, um, and to be able to speak to the lost and to be able to get them out of bondage. So it is a blessing to know that God is really has his hand upon you and that nothing can and nothing broken. Uh, we claim that 2018 and moving forward is going to be very, very, uh, not only is a prosperous year for you, but be very informative and God's going to push upon you because you need to be pushed here in 2018 yeah. moving forward. So we claim God is going to push up on you here and that your life is going to be like no no tomorrow. Because I believe God, got, God has much in store for you. I receive that. Thank you. No problem. Well, Dr. Natasha, we just want to thank you again for coming on the Logan Power Show today. It's giving your testimony. Ladies and gentlemen, get in, get in contact with her right now. She has her books, 12 of them available, all on Amazon. You know, she is a changed person who likes changing the game. So I want you all to keep watching, keep listening. Uh, people like her are the ones that are making a difference in this community and across this nation, across the globe. So um, we we'll look forward to working with you some more because I definitely want to talk to you more. All right. And thank you for having me. No, ma'am. Appreciate you. God bless you. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's her, Dr. Natasha Holman, man. She talked about how God had changed her life around. Man, think about it. She was homeless. Man, you know, she talks about how dropped out of school, went back, got all her stuff together, honorary doctor degree, master's degree, I mean, bachelor's, associate's, raising six children, all of her successful. Man, she is. What God says, man, she is walking with the favor of God on her life. So, hey, don't quit, family. Understand this. Focus. Because God's got something in store for you. Well, we're going to move forward, go with our second guest. Man, she has her own dog. I repeat this, her own action figure dog. She's the one with super beauty. She's the one and only Miss Tiffany J. Go by Miss Tiffany Wilder. How you doing, ma'am? Can you hear me? All right, y'all, hold on with me. Trying to get Miss Tiffany on the line. So make sure she hears us. Well, hey, we're waiting for Miss Tiffany to get on the line. 
so that we can be able to speak to her. But, hey, I want to tell you all this, that God has a plan for you all. He honestly has a plan for you, your family, everybody who's listening to me right now. Understand this. Without God, nothing can be can be done. You got to trust him unknowingly. Know that God has a plan for you, you, your family, and everybody who's there. Um, so I want you all just to focus. I want you all to know that God has something really good for us. And I want you all who's to me right now to continue watching us and listening to us here at the Logan Power Show. Hey, our next guest is about to come on in a brief moment. But before we go to the next, next guest, we're going to go to quick, put some music on. Miss Kimmy, Kimmy, if you can hear me, put on our next song so we can uh, go through until we get our next guest on the line. I'm trying to get this, and then we'll be able to move forward from there.
All right, all right, family. Hey, understand this. God got a plan for you. God's got a way for you. God is too good for you. Man, God is good. What? Hey, for those who listen right now, hey, I want you all who listen to the Logan Power Show. Hey, I appreciate the y'all y'all who have been calling in, replying back to us, who've been watching us, keeping us motivated. Uh, the Elation is Radio. We can't tell you how uh, humble we are just being with this family. Um, blessed to have this family with us. Um, if Miss Kimmy Kim can hear hear me. To let you know, hey, we got much love for you. We appreciate what you're doing. Um, if you got some time to unmute yourself, Miss Kimmy Robinson, if you can, want to say some things, you're more than happy to do so. You know, always try to, you know, always give some love shout outs. We always appreciate what you're doing. So if you want to unmute yourself, Miss Kimmy, if you if you can, uh, definitely do so. If you can't, we understand completely. You know, that's one of the busiest ladies I know on the planet. This lady has multiple hats, and she's doing a lot for us here in the Lakers Radio, so we know how much of a gem and an angel she is for this ministry um, and what she's doing here here at the Logan Power Show and for everyone's connected on the Lakers Radio Network. So we definitely want to thank her again uh, and what she has done. But I just want you all to listen to me right now. Uh, I want you to understand there are some things that we here at the Body of Christ, we got to make sure that we are putting this thing forward. And what I mean by putting forward, we're putting our life on the line and we're doing what God has called us to do. We're actually moving this this needle move forward. We're not making any excuses. Uh, and we are making it happen. So I want you all right now to focus in and actually know that God has a plan for you. Repeat that again. God has a plan for you. I'm going to say that once more time. God has a plan for you. And you say, Calvin, what are you talking about? What do you mean God has a plan for me? He does got a plan for you. He's got a plan for you because he put you on this earth for a reason. You got to ask yourself, what is your purpose? What is what is the actual mandate by you being here on earth? You got to know that you know that you know that God has a plan for you. So I want you all who are listening to me right now to think about your life. Think about where you could have been and where you are now. Know this without a shadow of a doubt that God has a plan for you. He does, family. He's got a plan for us. He's got a plan for us right now. So I want you to, to take heed to what God is doing. Understand this. Without him, you know that God has a plan for all of us. You know that God is making it happen. God is moving things for you. He's moving these mountains. I know a lot of us, you know, mountains were all around your life. It was stopping you. But, man, God knew what was best for your life. God knew where you were supposed to be at. God knew since day one. God knew exactly where he needed to be at. He needs you to be next to him. He needs you to be in this in this state, in this city. He knew you had to be there. So we know that God has a plan. God has a purpose. So I want you to understand this, that God has a plan for you. I'm reaching out to my next guest uh, and see what's going on and see what we got going on here. And I'm reaching out right now. Try to get some of our guests ahead of time 
and see what we can do. So, you know, family, it's all about putting God first. It's all about doing what I will. I was just at Citywide Prayer here in North Charleston, South Carolina, um, at Riverfront Park. Man, God had moved so happily and mightily. Um, and, man, people's lives changed. Man, we gave so much stuff on today. It was clothes given, food given. Um, man, it was food. I mean, there was prayer. People's lives are changed. A lady who was on a, in a walker, she got up and she walked, literally. Like her body just got together. True manifestation was happening on today. I mean, I couldn't tell you how good God was moving in prayer on today. You were there from 9 a.m. to 3. I mean, people's lives were getting changed. Doors were opening up. So I want you all who are listening to me right now to get this in, in your thoughts, get this into your mind, how strong prayer is when you're in one accord. When you pray corporately, we got to focus on one thing, not about yourself, but about one thing that God wants you to do. When you pray tonight, say, God, what do you want me to pray about? What is it that I need to put my heart to? What I, what does I need to do? Sometimes you want to pray self, selfish prayers, you, you and your household, and that's it. It's more than just that. It's about others. Trust me, it's about others. It's about doing what God has to do. For those who listen to us right now, if you have any questions, you want to, uh, you know, tell me some things going on in you. Hey, if you listen in, hey, unmute yourself right now. Tell us where you're calling from. 646-564-9842. 646-564-9842. Again, we're live here in the Logan Power Show. Nationwide, worldwide. Hey, I tell you right now, you having a ball. I want you all to just call in. So I know what further ado, we got an extra guest coming in early. She's running for office, Miss Donna Newton. How you doing, ma'am? Well, Mr. Logan, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you again for calling in a little early. You know, we had our six thirty guest who was unable to make it, but, hey, we want to get you to get to get you on the ball, talk about what you're going on, why you're running for political office. So, Ms. Newton, the floor is yours. Tell us who you are and why you're running. Well, uh, my name is Donna Brown-Newton. I'm actually running for Charleston County Council on District 1 office. That consists of uh, North Mount Pleasant, which, is, which covers uh, the Snowden community. That's where I live. It also covers... Uh, Green Hill, Remley's Point, uh, Phillips Community. It covers the. Um, it also covers Park West, Dunes West, Rivertown, and Carolina Park, and some parts wow. of. The, yeah, some parts of Arundel area. It's sort of. It covers a vast area, Mount Pleasant. Well, I have, first of all, I'm not a politician. This is my first time ever running for political office. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I've lived in Mount Pleasant most of my life. I attended Charleston County Public Schools, and my children also attended the school. I graduated from Charleston County Public School. I received my bachelor's degree from Southern Wesleyan University. I, I currently am employed with Charleston County School District for over 25 years. And the reason I'm running is I... I've observed a lot of things going on, and one thing I've noticed is that a lot of communities are not being represented. I'm running because I want to be the voice for the underheard in Charleston County. So I'm running for, I'm concerned about public transportation, I'm concerned about affordable housing, and infrastructure. Those are some of my concerns right now, which got me um, off my seat and on the ballot. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Now tell people what the exact district you're running for. It's uh, District One. Yes, ma'am. Um, City Council. I'm district running one. as a Democrat. Yes. yes okay. All right. Now, 
you, you mentioned that you want to see some things change in regards to your area and people being misrepresented. So what are some th- things you want to tackle and get changed around your area? Well, one of the main issues is um, affordable housing. A lot of people okay. in Mount Pleasant and Charleston County as a whole are unable to afford to live in a decent home and decent community that, that they grew up in. Because as it stands right now, it used to be the average income would be able to pay 30% of their salary for housing. Right now, but since 2006, that's increased to 50% of the salary goes to housing. And you also know right now, a lot of people that work here, residents that work in the community, make minimum salary, which is $7.35 an hour. And mm. it's almost impossible to afford to live, especially here at Mount Pleasant, when they consider affordable housing as $300,000. For, for a home. A lot of residents can't afford to do that. Right now, we're struggling to even pay, have to work two jobs just to pay the basic needs of, for the rent. And Mount Pleasant, the average rent starts at $1,600 a month. It's just impossible. People just can't afford that. Very true. Very true. And for those that are unaware of how Mount Pleasant is, uh, Mount Pleasant is considered to be, um, I consider to be like from Los Angeles, like Beverly Hills area or I consider it to be like Buckhead if you live in the Georgia area or I would say uptown Manhattan if you're from New York or you see high you know the high price area where for instance the the cost of living is very high um great public school system but if you're trying to live a good life you got to make some good money to live that side of town so I totally agree with what you're saying uh, and if you live in the state of South Carolina, minimum wage is about seven dollars plus an hour, which is uh, darn right ridiculous. If you making that kind of money, you do have to work at least two jobs just to make ends meet. So you're spot on. Um, so what can we do to change it? What's it? What? How can we? By you being with City Council, what are some things that we need to change? You mentioned affordable housing. So what's a good price range that we should be making these houses to be looking at? Well, it's, it's, I'm right, but it's county counts. That's actually all of Charleston County. So um, what the, pro- what the problem I see is going on right now is a lot of long-time residents like myself, unfortunately, we live in Mount Pleasant, but we can't really afford to live in Mount Pleasant. I think if I, we hadn't been here for five generations, me and my family may not, cannot be afford to live here. People look at Mount Pleasant and say, oh, everybody in Mount Pleasant makes uh, a lot of money makes at least three figures over here to live. But the average person in Mount Pleasant do not make that kind of money. So we need to, I've, I've, Charleston County right now has started a task force to look at and, and starting a partnership with some other agencies. Cajun is one that comes to mind. There's a Christian based um, organization that works with people with, with affordable housing. And so Charleston County has just started a, a task force, which is good. I'm glad to see it. Finally, mm-hmm. I understand that something needs to be done and that they're working on something right now, and which is it's a good effort. Let's see where it goes. It's hard to say what the average income should be. I'm looking at some things that possibly um, some grants that can help people to be able to afford some of the housing. We know mm-hmm. as, as an African-American, we've been always, we've been redlined for so long as we're, we're trying to play catch up as far as, being able to afford some of the homes that they have here because, unfortunately, what the system is set up, where African Americans have always been the last one to receive a home loans. So some of the communities we yes. can't afford to live in. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Um, you spot on a lot of times. Uh, statistics, if if you live in Mount Pleasant, majority are Caucasian. And African Americans, if you're African American working in Mount Pleasant, you're either either living a certain part of Charleston, North Charleston, maybe even Mont's Corner, maybe even Goose Creek, to be able to work in Mount Pleasant in most cases, because a lot of times these jobs are not paying or don't want to pay. And the state of South Carolina is still the right to work state. Uh, minimum wage is still down. 
So once you fix affordable housing, um, what's next on your agenda? Well, one, well, you mentioned about people working here and living someplace else. That's where, where public transportation would come in. If we even had viable public transportation, that would help at least offset some of the costs people having to travel to and from to get their job. Right now, the average person teacher at at Wando High School cannot afford to live in Mount Pleasant. Thirty five percent of the teachers that live in, in that work and teach at the schools in Mount Pleasant live someplace else. That even goes along with the uh with our public service workers as our police officers and our firefighters, they have to live someplace else because cost living is so high in Mount Pleasant. Public transportation would help ease some of that burden by if you live, say you live downtown, well, not even downtown, if you live in North Charleston or if you live West Ashley, if we had good public transportation, at least you can be able to get back and forth to your place of employment without the extra burden of having to buy a, a vehicle where you can't afford maybe possibly make the payments on. So that's, that's one thing we need to work on, the infrastructure. Public transportation would be great. We need that over here in Mount Pleasant because it helps, but also with pollution. It helps with mm. um, traffic, with all the, the cars that's on the road. Public, a good public transportation would help alleviate some of that problems we have right now with constant traffic on Ravenel Bridge, on 526. So public transportation is one way to help with the infrastructure. Got it. Okay. All right. So we got affordable housing, public transportation, what's another thing you want to tackle once you get those two done? We didn't look at um, also um, at some of the, uh, the permits and development plans we have in place. We're right now, we're doing a lot of development in, in, in Mount Pleasant, actually in Charleston County as a whole, is doing a lot of development. And mm -hmm. we need to sort of sit back, look at what's going on, and reevaluate uh, what we're doing before we get any more permits to build new structures in, in the area. It's taken away from the greenery in the area, which contributes to a lot of flooding in the area. When you cut down the trees, right. you know, you cut, yeah, not, there's another problem because the water has no place to go, so there, there's the flooding issue. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Okay, so got those three done. What's the other one? What's the last one? A fourth one you want to work on? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Again, after you've done, after you've done affordable housing, public transportation, you mentioned about the infrastructure. What's another thing you would like to tackle and get accomplished? Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's so many things that Charleston County right now and the council is working on. We look into. They got 526 that needs to be uh, looked into. They got the, the old naval mm -hmm. hospital that's up down with some options for that. So there's quite a few things that council is working on that need to be investigated more. Just sort of figure out where to go at. Being a being a yeah. newbie to this, to this job, a lot of things I have to look back and investigate some things and just study some other things. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, how can people get in contact with you? Also, well, they can uh, either then go to my website. It's Donna Brown mm -hmm. Newton dot com that's that's one way and um on facebook at donna brown newton dot com on twitter uh donna for counsel there's a number there's a number of ways to get in touch with me and and i just want to remind people early voting has already started in south carolina early voting started mm -hmm. last week and if you live uh mount pleasant or west ashley Starting Monday, you can go uh, early absentee voting to the Seacoast Church. So you want to get your voting out the way before Election Day to avoid the crowds. I, I'm encouraging people to go on and vote early. That's what I'm going to do. Vote early. That way you can sit back and enjoy. Uh, cause, like right now, we have a pop-up thunderstorm in Mount Pleasant. When it rains, people don't want to go to the poll. So I'm encouraging folks to go and vote early. I'm encouraging folks to vote Democratic. That's what I am, and I think we have the best message for uh, South Carolina, for Charleston County. We got a lot of good candidates mm -hmm. um, right now running 
some of these, some of these offices that, that's being challenged right now has not been challenged by Democrats in over 20 years. So it's important True. for us. I'm, I'm glad that now we have an op- we have options. We have a choice between the two parties. In the past, you go to the polls, all you see is one person named there, and you didn't have a choice. So now I'm glad that Charleston County has choices, and I'm glad to be one mm-hmm. of the choices that they're able to make. I just want to encourage everybody to come out and vote. Your vote is important. Your vote is needed. And that your vote is your voice. And so if you vote yeah. for me, Donna Brown Newton, I would like to be your voice underheard on, in Charleston County right now. Amen. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, Ms. Donna, Ms. Donna Newton, what I would say for you, ma'am, is that when you have the opportunity, when you do win, I'm definitely going to congratulate you for even just coming on my show. I'm humbled that you would decide to come on my show. Um, I always got a lot of great ideas that I can always do to help you. So I'm always a phone call away to help you anytime I can in pushing your initiative forward. I, 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 I always like it exactly. yes, I, I appreciate that, you know, because once what what happens is when people get elected sometimes, they forget about the average person. Yes, and my job is if I become be, be, I have the privilege of becoming the next uh county council member for district one, I want to have an open door policy so people can come and talk to me so I can be able to speak from the knowledge of the community from a long-time resident, from a new resident here in, in, in Charleston County, I should be able to be the person that speaks for everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Ms. Donna Newton. I tell you right now, Donna Brown Newton, live here at the Logan Power Show. For those on the replay is listening also as well. November 6th, that's the time to vote, is the actual voting day. You can vote now. I would suggest voting now. There's a lot of voting spots. Seacoast Church is available. Also, the main office um, near Leeds as well. Um, Correct. Ms. Donna, I, just, I pray the best for you. Um, I will. I can tell you this. When you, when you do get an opportunity to get to the office, that naval weapon station, that uh, the old Navy hospital is not being used. Um, you're gonna find a lot of different, a lot of loopholes there that could probably make a lot of difference. Um, when it comes to public transportation, I'm gonna be straightforward with you. Someone's got to pay the buck, and some people don't want to pay for it. But I pray that people like yourself uh, do bring change. Uh, I would recommend if, if for affordable housing, you would probably have to go to maybe the townhomes instead of bigger homes. Yeah. Uh, due to the fact or actually look into raising the actual wage that could probably help with that Um, or look into what's called a a tax credit for people that do work in the area who decide to do decide to to buy a home, have a tax credit to offset it. Um, So it's like a catch-22, but, you know, I tell people right now, it's like, you know, um, those are some things that could probably help you. I know 526, that's still a, still a thing that, you know, people want to say who's going to pay the money, things like that. Well, if you expand it, you know, where everybody knows the uh, low country area from Charleston, Mount Pleasant, Monk's Corner, Goose Creek, uh, North Charleston is going to have close to over a million people combined in the next couple of years. So we definitely want to make sure that we do expand 526. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a, a nightmare even more on this interstate. So um, I can tell you that, you know, I want you to keep fighting, okay? I, I certainly will be fighting for the, the average person, fighting for the needs of the community, and trying to make the best decision going to be beneficial to everybody in Charleston County. Yeah. Like you said, Election Day is, is November 6th. I'd, I'd like your support. And support your listeners to vote for Donna Brown, the Charleston County Council, District 1. We live in this area, Mount Pleasant. I would like to have your support. Like I said, I cover a lot of area here. And it's uh, it's important 
for us to be heard, especially for the residents in Mount Pleasant to, to have a voice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, I definitely want you to, ladies and gentlemen, give her some opportunity. I want you all to give her a time to get onto the poll, and uh, let's make a difference. Let's make it happen. I'm excited. You should be excited as well. And, you know, to God be the glory. Um, and we can go from there. Uh, so, uh, and then we can move that forward. So, Ms. Donna, uh, we thank you again for calling. We appreciate you. Uh, one thing that I like to do, uh, you know, before you go, can we pray for you? Oh, definitely, yes. <laughs> All right. Father, name is we look up right now, Ms. Donna Brown Newton. Father, we thank you, Father, right now that you are a leader and God in every way of her life. We praise you, Father, that right now doors will open. Father, we thank you, Father, that she says she wants to lead the people. So, Father, grant her grant her prayer. And then, Father, that right there from that point, you then would remind her that the that the actual she decreed and she declared, and we decree and declare that, hey, she be the next one in line. And we decree and declare that, hey, Father, you're going to hold her accountable. And that, Father, she's going to be a beacon of light. And we praise you, Father, right now, nothing hidden, nothing broken. And we just praise you and thank you for what's going to happen for our life, both now and forever. And all with that prayer, saying, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that. No problem, ma'am. Like I said, when your time comes, hey. Keep beacon that beacon of light. Keep moving it forward, and to God be the glory. Well, thank you, Mr. Lowe, for the opportunity to talk to your listeners, and I hope I can make a difference. You will, ma'am, and I'll be I'll be I'll be staying in contact with you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much yes, for the opportunity. You're, you're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. You have a great evening too. You too. Okay. All right, Liz. Yes, ma'am. Right now, you said Donna Brown New lies at the Logan Power Show. She's going for county county council for District One. Hey, I tell you right now, you want her to put your in your Rolodex. You want her to get connected. Uh, I tell you right now, your life is going to change. Or uh, if you want to, to know, to God be the glory. Well, we have our final guest. She'll be calling in right now. She's the one on Miss Tiffany J. What's up? How's everything? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. We want to definitely uh, thank you for calling in. I know you're a busy lady, but I want you to talk about yourself. And let's get busy. Let's talk about Tiffany J and SB. Super Beauty, talk about your dog. So, uh, Tiffany J, I am an inspirational personality and entrepreneur. I'm a musical artist, singer-songwriter, and uh, most recently, I am the, or I'm being known for being the creator of a character called Super Beauty, Um, and Super Beauty is a 10-year-old girl who has high self-esteem that has the superpower to diminish the influence of bullies and boost self-esteem and confidence in her peers, so uh, with that character, I was inspired to create her based on my own personal life experiences. Um, I grew up with low self-esteem and depression. Um, I contemplated suicide several times in life, actually attempting at the age of 12. So I know what it feels like to not feel good about yourself. So after overcoming, um, you know, those, those bad lows in life, um, I kind of found my freedom and I found my identity. Um, and once I found who I truly was, I began to, you know, wholeheartedly love that. So um, I wanted to do something in addition to what I was already doing as far as uh, being a self-esteem advocate and the founder of an organization called the Beauty You Are Boot Camp. I wanted to do something else that was different. Um, so thus the super beauty character was created and, uh, we launched the brand in March of this year. We launched it with the release of the first book of the series. The the first book is called super beauty saves the day. Um, and we have most recently 
released our very own plush doll that's called the Super Beauty Pep Talker. And she says over 20 motivational phrases to boost self-esteem. So I'm just super excited about all of the new opportunities and all of the the new people that I'm reaching with, the consistent message that I think I'm pouring out. Amen, amen, amen. So with your newfound success, um, what do you want people to get out of from your life? Because um, your music is very authentic. If you ever listen uh-huh. to Miss Tiffany J, I mean she's got she got her own swagger, y'all. I mean she don't <laughs> hold back. Um, you know she's a great. I mean she's one of the greatest people. She can make herself some great banners now. I'll tell you right now, if you if you need a banner done, that's the person you need to holler at. Um, yeah, holler at me, Tjzel. That's that's my full time job. <laughs> yeah. My full time business. So She's a, she's an expert. So, what do you want people to get out out of out of out of out of your music and out, out of per, uh, purchasing the doll and getting involved with with the tiff with the super beauty? What do you want people to get out of this? Well, at the end of the day, I want people to um, to somehow say because of you, I was inspired to keep going and, and not give up. I I want people to. Um, and everything that I do, find their own being, um, find what's true to them and learn how to, you know, wholeheartedly and unconditionally, lo- unconditionally love that. So um, as long as people are freely being themselves and finding their own superpowers within themselves, um, I think I'm winning. Okay, I got you. I got you doing your thing. So hey, I don't I don't I don't knock what you're doing. I believe that um it's a blessing to what you're doing and how you're making a difference. And for those that don't know, if you go on to Facebook, check out Tiffany J. Um she's got a song called Super Dope Chick. I do. Super dope super dope chick. Um she has the doll super beauty. Um she has a different type of um she's her and she's new. And her song got a nice beat to it. Uh I've been I've been following along, you know, trying to make sure I stay within stay within the trends of what's going on. You know, my kids um, they always say, Is is it lit? I say, Yeah, it's lit. We good. It's fire. <laughs> um, you know, you gotta gotta have it. Um, so where you see yourself going? I mean um, you won the best award for Grand Hustle on BET dot com. You came out the winner. Where do you see yourself going? Where are you taking your business? Where do you see it the, the long term? Um, well currently we're working on some some pieces of the Super Beauty brand in particular, um, that hadn't been released yet. So, uh, there's a boy character that'll soon be introduced. Um Plus, we are working on an animation series as well as a, a series with the actual mascot that I have that travels. So, um, in addition to those two things, we're also working on a STEAM app. Um, STEAM stands for the Science, Tech, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. So, um, that app will be called Super Beauty and Brains. So I'm I'm really just wanting to touch the hearts of people, um, letting them see how our differences make us unique, and they aren't necessarily made to set us apart, but they are made to to show us who we are and that nobody else can do us um, better than we can do ourselves. Like we're the only uh, one of us that there will ever be. So. I just want everybody to understand that. Um, and I want to make sure we bring a focus to education. Uh, so we'll make sure we, you know, have that down the line as the, the brand grows. But I'm just looking forward to, to seeing how many more um, lives this is going to touch because the Super Beauty brand is is fairly new. It's not even a year old yet. So a lot has happened in these, let's see, nine months, maybe eight, nine months. So a lot <laughs> has you. transpired with the super beauty brand in particular. 
Um, I've been a musical artist solo wise for five years. Hold on, six years. I'm sorry. It's 2018, so I've been doing music as Tiffany J for six years now, and I'm currently working on my second album um, that will hopefully be released the spring of 2019. So lots of good things in store. Um, I just opened up a brand new business location I call Tips Lab. So um, God is just good. He's propelling me, and I, I like to tell people all the time, test never stops. We're always going to be mm. tested and tried. But God really looks at how you respond and react to those tests to see if you are in a position to handle more. So we know he's not going to put more on us than we can bear. But if you can't handle small issues, he's not going to elevate you to places where he knows big issues are going to come. So I, I just try to keep be mindful of that and recognize that when, you know, some of the blocks come out, way is just something else to step on top of to lift me higher. So I'm just trying to stay the course. Amen. Amen. And how can people get in contact with you? Um, I am Tiffany J dot com. Uh to reach me personally, well, I, I'm saying personally because I'm a personality. Uh it's still a business, but I am Tiffany J dot com. Um and as far as super beauty goes, I am superbeauty dot com. And we're all over social media and the internet. So if you Google Tiffany J and Super Beauty, and that's Tiffany J with no space, um, I'm sure you'll find something on us. Got it. Amen. Do you mind if we pray for you before we before we go? Oh, please do. Got it. Now, has anyone spoken to your life in this past couple of months? Yes, sir. All the time. I'm a, I'm a praise and worship leader, so God is always first, and I, I'm I'm always open to receiving um, prayers of people. At the same time, I have a spirit of discernment, so um, okay. I just know that what you have coming for me um, is only going to be of greater good. So I'm welcoming it. Okay. I'm gonna release this to you, and I tell you what's gonna hold to the fire that. Uh, I believe we we are meant to be together, connected as a team. I believe you can help me. Mm -hmm. I can believe I can help you. But your Mm -hmm. name is not Tiffany J. Your name is Pastor Tiffany J. That's your actual name is Pastor Tiffany J. Praise and worship is something that you love doing, but people respond to you because you're a pastor because you can teach those of the Joshua generation to get to the next level. When it comes off to your animation, Netflix is going to be your actual breakthrough because you can do the you can do the animation right now and do the stuff what's called in small snippets. What you can do is fifteen minutes, thirty minutes, sort of like things of your actual what you've been through with Super Beauty, and then make it happen because you have the doll, but then also the clothing line is what's going to take it to another level. The SB clothing line for young kids to inspire that have been bullied, um, told they're not pretty enough, things like that. Because you're going to encourage those young people to say, hey, I was told I didn't look good, but you have a spirit of discernment. You know what? God made you beautiful, and you're beautiful who you are. So when your clothing line launches, that's going to take the whole other level because you're going to get busy. Super Beauty just just kicked you off the other level, but you're going to be very busy. That it's going to be hard to get in contact with. So get ready for what God is going to do in your life. And I, I can tell you it. right now, I'm glad that I got your number now because you ain't going to pass your number out later on. I can tell you that. You need your assistant to give the biggest out to your assistant and not you directly. So I, I, I encourage you to, to be what God has called you to do. It's the pastor. Because you got a mouth to the nations that's going to help a lot of people that don't know what it really is. Does that make any sense? It makes sense. And I'm going to just say I appreciate um, your outpouring. Um, we might have different definitions of what pastor means. Um but I, I believe that I'm I'm very in tune with, with God and, and my purpose. Um but I I thank you. No, no problem. Listen to me, you're not one of the people, the pastors that gotta be super dressed every night. That's not your style. 
You could be in the jeans and the T-shirt, and I'm just going to do what God called me to be. That's just how you roll. But people, yeah, you I, have I, a, you I, have we a, on the radio, right? So I, I don't want to, yeah, um, I don't want to get into a debate. But no I problem. do, I do. Thank you. Oh, no problem, not a problem at all. Like I said, you have a, a, an anointing on you, so I definitely want to let you know. I want God to continue to bless you. Um, but let's go into prayer for you because, uh, and then definitely we'll talk more because we definitely want to connect with you. How does that sound? That sounds fine. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you right now. Let's Miss Tiffany J T. Father, we thank you, Father, for how you blessing her. Father, you opening doors for her. We thank you, Father, how you blessing her family. Father, blessing her her businesses, Father, and bless her ministry. We pray, Father, she talks on to the people across the nation, across the globe, that people's lives are going to be changed. We thank you, Father, that nothing hindered, nothing broken. We thank you, Father, right now that you are making ways for her like no tomorrow. And, Father, we just thank you and we praise you that when she does, when she get, when she puts her, her voice to the mic, when she introduces her dolls to the world, people's lives are going to know how, who they are inside and out. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much for having me on the show. I apologize for my tardiness as well. No, 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 no. You were meant to come at the end. I got to have, I got to end it. I got to end it right with, with people who was going to change the game. Like I said, the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide, Miss Tiffany J. Nationwide, worldwide. We thank you again for calling, and uh, heaven's best to you, okay? Same to you. All right, stay in contact with me so we can talk more, okay? Okay, thank you so much, sir. No problem, man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hermit Stephanie J. Live here at the Logan Power Show. Hey, I tell you right now, always stay humble, y'all, because like I said, you never know what God's going to do for you. This, that young lady just hurt, man. Doing some great things. You heard before, Miss Donna Brown Newton. She's doing great things. Doctor Latasha Holden, man, doing phenomenal things. Thirty people you heard. Three lives have changed. Hey, it's a blessed time. What's all the time I got? My name is Calvin Lowe, the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. Hey, family, we love you. We see you soon, Miss Kimmy Kim. Take us out. Oh.